Today I'm going to review the first half of the book KGB Banker. I received it as a gift from John Christmas, who is one of the authors of the book, about half a year ago. And uh, there are reasons why during this half year I managed to finish only half of the book. I could have easily finished the book in a week. But there are some issues with the book with who I struggle. There are also a lot of good things, a lot of uh, insight into banking world. But um, in my opinion, um, there are certain shortcomings when it comes to information technologies. For me, as an IT educated person, there were just uh, plot events which didn't make any sense to me. I really struggled with um, the absence of encrypted communication. Like, it's not even a concept in the book. Like, it seems to me that the authors don't know what encrypted communication is. At least uh, this impression is uh, created while reading the first half of the book until page 162. The book has a little bit short of 300 pages. That's one thing. And then there is also like this heavy focus on journalists. There is this uh, woman named uh, Santa Ezerinha and, and she's like this very very important journalist around who a lot of things evolve and uh, I don't understand why it's so important to contact exactly her why such an opportunity like uh, Wikileaks or, or pretty much any open platform is not um, considered in the book. I, I just don't get it. Somebody would do that. There is uh, also one person called Erix who is being shot in a tunnel in Riga while he is uh, trying to call via a payphone. And uh, this person wants to contact Santa Ezerinha anonymously so that nobody can track him but somehow he doesn't even think in theory about the idea of encrypted communication uh, he has apparently absolutely zero idea that something like encrypted uh, computers exist that something like VPN exists that something like encrypted communication exists. Like, really, no idea why he doesn't even think about it. Like, these days, it's hard to be on YouTube without getting at every third or fourth YouTube video an ad for some kind of VPN service. It's like all over the place. And this book, uh, of course, uh, is situated in a parallel universe. So there are some politicians, for example, who are truly fictional. And the Turaida Bank by itself is fictional. But still, it has a close proximity to our universe. And maybe... It is uh, a decision made specifically by authors that in that parallel universe something like WikiLeaks or something like encrypted communication just doesn't exist. It just doesn't. Uh, yeah, But it's nowhere explained and for me as a reader it just creates frustration because there are a lot of good things in the book. It has a lot of thrill. It's uh, well written. It has a very 
eventful turns in the storyline. There are a lot of good things, but really this uh, whole approach towards information technologies is uh, just done really bad in my opinion and that really takes from me the joy to read the book and then some events come where it makes no sense at all why didn't they use encrypted uh, communication why didn't they do it a little bit different using IT and then I just stop reading the book and then I just put it away for months and, and stop reading and this was one of the uh, very few books I think the only book in my life which I threw through the room in anger I really took it and bam to the other end of the room and it was at the place where um, this um, Bob yeah, stole this data from Turaida Bank. He like stole all 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 these secret evidence files, which proved that it's a big Ponzi scheme. And he decided to give the only copy of the data which he gathered under great risks, the only copy, to a politician. He had hadn't even thought about making a copy of the data like like just just taking a simple usb stick pulling it in to uh, the computer and making copy of of the files or, or uploading them to a cloud or whatever there are so many possibilities like the information wouldn't have become less if he would have made a copy if these are such important world changing uh, uh, files. If he really, really cares for Latvia, then why doesn't he make a copy of the files? Like, if these are really important files, like, computers can break. Accidentally, someone can, uh, like, uh, really put some lemonade or some Coca Cola on the computer and it can break. You can spill some beverages on, on, on laptops. These things happen. And then the data can be gone. A laptop can be stolen, that can also happen. Why not make a copy of the data? I, I just cannot understand the decision. And that's really a point which makes me angry. Because it's, it's just so dumb. It, it's just dumb to not, if you gather very important information, if you risk your life, if you risk your career, if you risk everything you have to gather the data and then you give the only copy you have of this data away without making any copy for yourself, then I really struggle to feel any empathy with the struggles you have to deal with because this data disappears then. I really struggle to have any empathy with somebody. I just think of pure uh, stupidity. Really, nothing else. Because otherwise, it's a good book. Otherwise, like, like, it reveals many things that are going wrong in Latvian banking system. It reveals the big Russian influence, the big KGB influence. There are really also a lot of good things in the book but like this whole IT part it's it's just a mess and it is not well uh, researched like the author should have taken some consultant or, or done just like a little bit of research like like how does whistleblowing work even worse uh, John Christmas actually himself has used in the past John Christmas is the guy who gifted me this book and one of the authors of the book he actually has used alternative channels he has used uh, his YouTube channel to spread the information he had his own uh, homepage so he is kind of aware that 
there are other possibilities to distribute information other than contacting journalists. Yet in the book, it's all about contacting journalists. That's like the only opportunity for bank employees to get the information out. Like, that's a plot which contradicts the past of John Christmas. It actively contradicts what he himself uh, has been doing for many years. And uh, yeah, I, I think the storyline could have been written differently. But I mean, if people like the book and, and buy the book and the authors are happy with the performance of the book, then maybe it's just like my very specific IT related view but um, this book has certainly had its fair share of anger creation in me because the plot just didn't make sense because I had a lot of hopes because like in the back so so many good words about the book and also like if you look into the first few pages there are apparently many many recommendations of respectable persons who say yeah the book is awesome like you really tell at start yeah it will be a super awesome book it's a good book and really lovely to read such such so well written and great storyline really thrilling well the book is thrilling okay then i won't doubt about this but like the thrill is, for me at least, poisoned by the badly implemented IT part in the storyline. Well, that's my opinion about the first part. I will keep reading this book. I, I just need to, like, calm down after this massive IT hoaxes. Or, or it's different to describe abnormalities. And then I just calm down, forget them, come over them, and then, then I keep reading the book. But that's why I need a little bit longer. Thank you for watching.